Welcome YouTube friends and family to today's Thanksgiving-ish edition of the Wellness Homesteader. Now I know somebody's gonna say something, so I'm just gonna tell you, yes, yes indeed, I cut about eight inches off my hair because wearing it up all the time, y'all, I am just breaking it off. And at 61, I really didn't need hair to my waist. So generally what I do when I cut it, because yeah, I cut it myself, is uh, the day after I cut it, I began growing it out again. But my hope is, being winter, I can wear my hair down some. So what are we gonna do today? Well, I will probably be filming this over several days, so let me let you know that ahead of time. But today, I want to roast a turkey. Now, I've shared with y'all before, not super crazy about turkey. However, with today's prices, I am going to do my dead level best to enjoy turkey in several recipes and in the months, winter months to come, the canned turkey and the broth. So what I have here is a very old <laughs> Hamilton Beach Roaster. I do not do my turkey in the oven. Um, uses less power to use this. Number one, it cooks it a lot faster. Number two, and it always comes out perfectly. Number three, are you going to get a golden brown turkey? No, so know that ahead of time. If you're interested in a roaster, they're not super expensive, guys. I see them constantly at thrift stores. Always ask, you know, can, can I plug it in and check it and make sure it works? A lot of people divest themselves of they're big roasters because they are heavy and a little bit difficult to store. So when I was cleaning out my mom's estate, look what I found. I found electric roaster liners. So I think the worst part of using the roaster is cleaning it. And I'm not a lazy person, but woo boy, yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a can of our chicken broth. Now here is the chicken broth that was at the end this is a pint you do want to put some sort of liquid in the bottom of your roaster to get started or else you will have burning i'm going to go ahead and kick it on to 350. wow this thing is old i'm not sure how old it is but i don't ever remember uh, for maybe the last 30 years not having a turkey roaster. Anyway, all right. I know not everyone likes celery, but it will impart a lot of flavor to your broth. I don't like it raw, I don't mind the flavor. So I'm gonna start by just dropping in some celery sticks and just some onion chunks. And again, this is just going to help flavor our broth. Now you can season your turkey any possible way that sounds good to you. What I've done here, this was frozen, is I put this in the refrigerator uh, about three days ago. It is a 15, almost 16 pound turkey, so it did take a long time to start thawing. You don't, do not, do not, do not want to thaw at room temperature if it's your first time making a turkey or you just haven't done it in a long time. So let's, I would also suggest as you're cutting the plastic off, use a pair of scissors that you can wash in soapy water. All right, let me rearrange here, hang on. All right, so there is controversy about to wash, not to wash. Y'all do whatever you want to do. I always wash my chicken and any kind of fowl, shall we say. So, if you've never cooked a turkey before, let me tip you down just a little bit. Generally, at the neck end, you will have a bag of giblets. Here you go. You can cook those as a treat. Some people put it in their dressing or stuffing. And then at the part that goes over the fence last is what my dad called it. You may also have something. Now in this case, it's turkey gravy. And because the center of the bird 
is the last to thaw. Sometimes it's a bit of a challenge to get it out. Right, there we go. So you do want to check and make sure that there's no neck left in, etc. Now, most turkeys nowadays have the little pop-up, but I'm going to tell you that I'm actually not going to, ooh, I just unhooked the legs. I'm not going to be using that. And I'm just going to make sure that I have all of the wings loose like so. And you know, pick off anything like pen feathers. Sometimes there'll be a little bit of feather on it, especially if you're using a fresh turkey. So I like to roast breast side down. I think it does give some added moisture to your bird. The directions will always say roast breast side up. <laughs> Pardon me, because they're looking for that golden brown chicken breast. I'm not. I can tell that the turkey is done when the legs pull away freely and the juices run clear. It's super easy to tell. But again, this will cook pretty quickly, three to four hours in the roaster. So I'm going to go. Oh, don't tell me that you won't go in there. Okay, so let me share with you all that the turkey will not fit for a side up, it's too big for the roaster. Oh my word. So let me take you over here and show you. I flipped it over so this is just some um, seasoning that was in the broth. And there is a tiny pin feather. Not that we're gonna eat the tail. So how simple is this? Cover it, keep a close eye on it. I will check back with you and let you know how long a 16 pound turkey took to cook. And then we will start thinking about ways that we can use this meat, the bones, and the broth that came from the turkey because we are going to see how much we can save by just having one free to me turkey. Stay tuned. Three hours have elapsed. Our temperature indicator has popped up. We actually do have some nice browning on the wings. You can see the legs are freely movable. So next steps, because we are going to can this turkey, is going to be to place it on a platter. Not a bad looking bird, huh? Lots of lovely broth. I have turned off the roaster. Wait, have I? Yeah, now I have, <laughs> and it's unplugged. So I'm going to let everything cool down. I like to put a tin foil tent over my bird. This helps to keep it moist. So we'll let him hang out and then I will be tearing down the turkey in preparation for canning. Well, as promised, I want to see just how much use I can get out of this one 15 on the 16 pound turkey. So into my roaster pan, I have placed about a gallon and a half of water. And to that, I am going to add about three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And you may be like, ooh, that sounds awful. And I did leave the pan drippings as well as the onion and celery. So in order to make a true bone broth, you need to have the vinegar to help extract the beneficial properties from the marrow and other parts of the turkey carcass. So. Let me tip you down here. So here's what we have, a beautiful bird. Now, I did not go ahead and skim the fat off. Should put the lid on this. Because I have like a gravy separator that will allow the fat to rise to the top and I can pour off 
you know, the part that I want. So I am not going to save the skin as part of the broth. Um, I strictly want the bones. So I am separating out while the turkey is warm but not hot, all of the viable pieces of meat here. And then we have the option of, you could freeze it since the turkey's been frozen. I'm not going to freeze it. I'm going to can it. But you could can it in some of my pre-made chicken broth that I actually cooked the turkey in. Or we can use some of this delicious bone broth, which is what my plan is. <laughs> so this is a nice meaty turkey still fairly warm and I'm not trying to shred it one tip that I will give you if you're if you find the texture of canned meat a little off-putting if you try not to shred it in other words leave it into bigger pieces to me uh, it tastes a lot better and it it doesn't have like a weird texture so again, I'm peeling off the skin, I'm saving the meat, and there is a lot of meat on this bird. So I'm not gonna pick it 100% clean. I want a little bit of that meat to flavor. And then as I skin the carcass, <laughs> I am simply going to add in uh, probably the wings pretty much whole there isn't a whole lot of meat on, this bird must not have done a lot of flying. <laughs> not exactly muscular, but I am gonna take some of the skin away. Oh, this one's not too bad. So I'm gonna keep working here. I will bring you back, show you how much meat I got off of this bird for our canning. I am going to refrigerate it overnight because we want our broth to cook between 12 and 24 hours in order to extract all of the beneficial properties out of the, pardon me, out of the bone. Stay tuned. All right. So this is an eight cup bowl. I was able to take off the breasts in just two half pieces. So nice, very large pieces as you see here. In our roaster, which will go until we're ready to can tomorrow, we have about eight quarts, is my guess. I put in six quarts of water to all of the drippings, and then, of course, all of the bones. So we've got a nice full roaster pan here. So why am I going to all this bother when I can buy bone broth in the store? Well, this was something that really is only going to cost me a little bit of time and a little bit of electricity. And right now, many stores are offering, you know, if you shop there, you can get a free turkey. I honestly don't remember how I came by this free turkey. I think it was a leftover from the food pantry that they um, did not have storage space for. So I think that's how I got it, if I remember right. But I really think canning this in some delicious, flavorful bone broth will make it usable in a variety of ways. I do have a really neat recipe that I'm gonna be sharing with you tomorrow, which will be in just a minute. <laughs> Hopefully my hair will calm down. It's in a bad mood cause I cut it off. It's just really uh, humid today. So um, speaking of weather, y'all get ready. So today, it is cloudy. We're under a wind advisory, but it's 74 degrees. The girls are balk balking all over the place, having a great time. And they love the warmer weather. And guys, I'm getting three to four eggs a day still. So I'm really happy about that. I did finish, hello little squirrel buddy. <laughs> I did finish my egg tracker for October. And a couple of you are gonna be new chicken mamas. I won't call you out, but kind of made some notes on weather changes. I ended up with 102 eggs for the month, which I think is really good. Fancy Ray, 28. Jolene, 25. Marigold, my faithful layer, 29. And then Violet, 
brought up the real rear, my special needs little chicken at 20. And she's pretty much like an every other day layer, but I have to tell you guys, her eggs taste the best. I, I swear they do. So yesterday everybody laid, so that was a good thing. <clears throat> but the reason I'm bringing up weather is I just got a notification of two things I wanna bring up and talk about. And yeah, y'all, I'm still down on my back, so please excuse my leaning, but I'm comfortable that way. We are supposed to get one to three inches of snow uh, Friday. Today is Saturday. And y'all, I have to video a few days ahead of time because I never know what my mom's going to need, right? So, okay, there's that. But I want to tell you about an article that was in my local paper. I live in Greene County. Montgomery County is the next county over. And there is an article talking about the price discrepancies at Dollar General. And I want to bring it up because y'all know I've shared hauls from Dollar General. It's what I have in my town. So um, they go in and they look at the price on the shelf and then they scan the item. And I'm going to have to look up to see who it is. Is it the Federal Trade Commission? I'm not sure. Let, let me look that up and I'll clarify in a moment. And they scan the item and if there's a discrepancy in 2% or greater of the items, they pick like 30 items at random, then they fail. And you know, there's remediation. A huge number of Dollar Generals have failed. And guys, I wish they would check Walmart because I'm here to tell you it happens at Walmart constantly. And that's been all over um, YouTube and some of the different forums. So be alert that the price that you're paying at the counter is what it says on the shelf. The bad thing is what I'm hearing uh, at Walmart, I have heard it at Walmart, let me say it this way, is we can't keep up with the changing prices. So whatever it scans at is what if you want it, that's what you have to pay. They're not doing any price adjustments. Now, it didn't happen to me, but it happened to someone in front of me. So my suggestion to you there is don't buy the item. Just don't buy the item. So let me look that up right quick, and I will give you the final final on that. I'm going to put my turkey in the fridge to chillax for the overnight. We'll heat it back up when we get ready to can the turkey tomorrow and make our delicious meal from some of the fresh turkey. Stay tuned for that okay, info. That thing I said about the FTC, <laughs> totally disregard that. It's the county auditor. And over half of the dollar generals in the neighboring county failed, so they're going to expand. And they can only have one price discrepancy and they're picking 50 items. I misquoted that. So I just wanted to clear that up. So just be aware guys, you know, that prices are changing quickly. We know that, but Dollar General has issued a statement saying because of the lack of staffing, it's very difficult for them to keep up with the posted price versus the scanned price. So be aware. I'll see you in a moment, which will be tomorrow for me. Take care. Welcome back, day two turkey. So I want to share with you what our turkey broth, bone broth looks like after sitting all night, um, cooking all night, pardon me. And no, I'm not terribly, terribly sure how I'm going to get all of this strained, but what I can tell you is this made an absolutely beautiful broth, beautiful. So the first thing I'm going to do is strain out the bones and pieces that are easy to strain out. So as you see, let me show you here. I mean, we've cooked down to the bone and there may be a few pieces of meat um, still left on the bone that we may decide to salvage because with the prices of food, right? So how are y'all doing with the time change? You know, I just, I've said for years, why don't they just leave it alone? And I know there are two states in the U.S., for those of you who aren't in the U.S., which is Hawaii and I think it's Arizona. 
or something. Yeah. That don't that aren't on daylight savings time. But it just messes with me. And you would think, oh, fall, you get an extra bit of sleep. Well, no. <laughs> I actually do better with the springtime change because I don't sleep anyway. So I was up very early. And Frankie does not get the memo. So guys, see the bones that cooked clean? He didn't get the memo that the time changed. So he was at his usual. So yeah, I was up at two something, but that's okay. Y'all, I have to tell you this broth smells absolutely amazing, very rich. And again, I'm mainly um, striving to get the big pieces out. And then we'll do some additional straining. Now, if you are a purist and you don't want any um, pieces of meat or pieces of veg in here, you're gonna wanna strain this through cheesecloth. I prefer to have all of the goodness and wow, I don't mind that there's a little bit of this and that in there. So I am going to roughly strain it. Let's see how we're doing here. Did we get it all? We did. And it has cooked down by probably half. So if we don't have enough turkey broth to can our turkey, we can actually use some chicken broth. So let me switch things up here a little bit. I have this entire bowl <laughs> of waste and I am going to start straining out the broth, just the big pieces till I have a bowl of broth and then we will get ready to can steak. So what I've done here is just use a large hole strainer to strain the broth. This is what um, I didn't scoop out with the bigger scoop. Ugh. And we have this beautiful, amazing, rich turkey broth. Now again, there's some small pieces. You can certainly filter it with cheesecloth, but I'm not really interested in that. I would rather leave in all the flavor. So I wanted to share what would I think about the pan liner, save your money, because it actually stuck, let me see if I can show you this, stuck and burned and so there were holes in it but still it's not too bad but just just wash your roaster guys okay i'm gonna clean up my hands i have my jars washed soaking in hot water and we are gonna get to canning some turkey we are gonna save some out for a really good recipe i want to share with you stay tuned well, y'all we're getting closer to canning i will tell you I, ha I made some turkey salad yesterday. It was really pretty good for a person who's not a huge fan of turkey. I don't hate turkey, I just don't love it. This is a very rich and delicious tasting turkey. I was concerned it might be dry because I roasted it breast side up, but it is not. So what I have done thus far over here in my electric pressure canner I have put the jars and thank you again, Miss Sweet Cindy, for the jars because I could get seven in there and there was eight in the package. I don't know how I counted 10, <laughs> but they are beautiful. They're wide mouth too, so they're gonna be perfect size for a turkey. So I always consult a reference before I can and this is the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. Yes, I have marked for chicken, duck, goose, turkey, or game birds. You will leave a one inch head space. And for quart jars, which since this is pint and a half, we will process them at quarts. Um, if it's bone in it, 75 minutes. If it's deboned, it is 90 minutes. So we're gonna start there. And okay, we're almost to the warm point. So while we wait just a moment, I wanted to run something past you all. And it's not that I can't come up with ideas for videos, y'all. <laughs> Believe me, I, my mind is always busy. But I would like to do a series on 
homemade Christmas gifts. So I will share because it's not gonna be a surprise to my son. He wants an uni pizza oven. Um, so that's really going to be the majority of what my son gets because they're quite pricey. And he's fine with that. My son will be 38 in January. You know, he's, he's past the um, Santa's on the roof stage. But I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I could make a few gifts for friends and family and share some of those ideas with you. So if you would, drop me a comment below. Would you be interested in a series of making Christmas gifts from home? Some will be from the kitchen. Some may be from the sewing room or a craft. I, I haven't forgotten y'all. I have a, a new craft that I wanna try. So that I'll be, I will definitely be sharing that with you because I think it will be fun. So let me know about that. Why is this taking forever to eat? <laughs> All right, guys, let me just pause you for a moment while we wait for these jars to be warm. What I have in front of me here, besides my broth, I have taken the turkey out of the refrigerator just a little minute ago and um, kind of let the chill knock off of it. It, it is warm today, y'all. It was 76 degrees here yesterday. In November, I was barefoot and I was loving it. But anyway, um, so I'm gonna let that come to temperature. I have my lid soaking in some warm water. I still do that. I have a little bowl with a paper towel of vinegar because I am telling you, this is a very rich broth and it's going to be extremely important that I get all of the oily residue, the fat off of the rim. I have my funnel, I have my lid lifter, and debubbler. So, I think, oh, and jar lifter. <laughs> so, I think we're ready. The canner just is it. So, hang tight just a moment. Literally, the second, the second. I clicked off, it beeped. All right, so I'm just going to do the jars two at a time. So, what I am going to do is try to come up with a combination and I'm gonna tear it in pretty big chunks of light and dark meat. That way, my plan, I should say, for using this is turkey soup, turkey and noodles, um, turkey and dumplings. <laughs> I'm not planning on using this so much for turkey salad just because I don't wanna waste that beautiful broth that was created from the bones and all of the pieces and parts that you don't eat of the turkey. So you don't wanna pack it super duper tight, but you wanna pack it down a little bit or you'll end up with like a tiny bit of meat and a whole bunch of broth. So I just think these pint and a half, three quarter quart, I don't know why I have such a mental block on that. I guess because it's an odd size. I think they're the perfect size and they're beautiful y'all they are gorgeous so look how beautiful this portion of the half breast was I might leave that aside so I'm gonna fill up a couple jars show you what I do we'll get them into the canner and I'll bring you back at the end of the processing time to show you what they look like and then I wanna share with you, hopefully I can get this all done today, y'all. I will say one happy thing, my back is much better. So, yeah, God is good and the pain bomb is good. And I'm so grateful that I can actually stand up a lot straighter today <laughs> and I'm not doing the everlasting lean, which was what I've done for days. So sometimes, back pain can be relieved by your position and so this was definitely a positional muscular injury I did purchase myself a new heating pad because mine was from like the dark ages probably largely unsafe <laughs> just saying um, you know what guys I don't think let's lay that aside I don't know that we're gonna fill up all the jars I put in there with me, but we will see because it's taking quite a bit in the jar. Oh, y'all, it smells like Thanksgiving in here. It really does. 
All right, I'm gonna call that pretty good. Ugh. And by the way, I'm gonna revise my opinion on the liner for the uh, roaster. I wanna call it a stock pot. And I'm going to say, it was super simple to clean. I did it right away so that it did not have time, you know, to harden and get yucky. All right, let me just show you here kind of what first fill looks like. So at the bottom of the rings of the jar is where I'm going to call it the one inch mark. And I do want to debubble. And sometimes you have to add a little bit more broth. You have to take out some meat. One of the two, actually, make sure I got all the bubbles out. Looks pretty doggone good. And as I mentioned, let's give it a really good wipe down. And we will do one lid, <laughs> not two, and a ring. Again, finger tight. Pop it into the canner. It's not hot enough to like make the tongs. So that's how simple the process is. Let me get everything filled. I'll take you over to the canner and show you the process of getting it started. It is so easy, y'all. Stay tuned. I was able to put seven pint and a half jars or three quarter quarts. So I put on the lid close the lever, twist it. You want it to can here in the middle. If you can see the word can, come down here. It still says fill jars. So we're gonna hit the enter key and it's gonna start heating. I've already told it 90 minutes. <clears throat> so I did get four jars with turkey and three jars with broth alone. Now the broth only has to process 25 minutes, but we're just gonna go ahead and process the entire canner. So I'm not processing partial canner loads. Here's what we still have left broth wise. So we're getting close to the end, but we definitely still have some more delicious broth. And I saved some light and dark meat because we are going to make a recipe in part two of this video. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I wanted to share with you, we have four three quarter pints, and I don't know if y'all can still see, but we still have boiling going on. Um, everything has sealed so far. <laughs> Fingers crossed, right? And those are of the turkey in broth. I have because my canner is just now cooling, I have four more three quarter pints of just this beautiful broth. And if you see the white here, even though I put vinegar in the canner, I do have some hard water deposits, but that's okay. I also ended up with one one quart and one pint. So lots of delicious, healthy bone broth that I'll be able to use in recipes to come. I really hope you'll tune in on Thursday for part two. I am going to share with you how to make a turkey mushroom strudel. So I know we always have a lot of leftover turkey and there's only so many ways you can eat turkey, right? This I think is gonna be a real winner. So don't forget to drop me a comment below about Christmas gift videos. And until I see you again, be healthy, be well, be blessed, take care.